Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to my vlog reading some very popular KU books. The first thing I will be reading is Ruthless Creatures. I heard it's delightful. I have heard the hero is very possessive and completely soft for the heroine. So that's my perfect hero. I'm very excited to start. Then I will also be reading Throttle, which seems to be a Formula One romance. I haven't heard the best things about it, but it's incredibly popular. I will then be reading What He Doesn't Know which is the story of a woman who is married and her husband seems to kind of be a piece of shit. And then um, a guy from her past shows up. I think there is cheating in this. The duet, and I might read it in this vlog. Who's to say? I'm gonna save it till the end. And then the other book that I will be reading is this book by QB Tyler. This is an incredibly popular title. Some of these have fallen off like last year into the beginning of this year and I'm just now finally getting to them, but I would say Ruthless Creatures and the QB Tyler one have like withstood the test of time and they are still incredibly popular. So in other news, uh, today is a big day in my household. In about an hour, I have to take the cats to get their spay and neutering. And then I go and pick them up at three. So I'm, I'm a little stressed out. Like my heart is a little bit uh, pounding and today is going to be a very sh interesting day. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sit down and read. I already have planned to basically do like a top to bottom clean, um, particularly in the ferret room while I wait to pick them up because I know I'm just going to need that like push to do other things. So that is what I'm doing for the day. I will update you whenever I have gotten into Ruthless Creatures and I have some thoughts. friends it is Tuesday I haven't I didn't talk to you yesterday I remember actually when the last time I updated you was but I took them to the vet we came home Bane is a-okay he's adjusting to his cone well Gotham did not adjust well at all she sat in my partner's office and didn't move wouldn't eat wouldn't drink so I ended up staying home today took the cone off of her head and she we finally managed I finally managed to get her to eat and now she's sleeping but it's been like an exhausting couple of days but I finished Ruthless Creatures like a couple of hours ago maybe an hour ago and I ended up giving it three stars I didn't really like it all that much it was really boring and the way people have been pitching this book is actually kind of a spoiler but it's basically about a woman who, she lost her husband five years ago. And now this guy moves in next door that seduces her. And he's there for like a specific reason. And if you know, you know. If you don't, it's a spoiler. Because you actually don't know until like 60 to 70% of the way through the book. It's like the conflict of the book. So I don't know why people pitch it the way that they do. Because it is a spoiler. But so I have an issue with early hookups in books it I, I have said this many times on my channel um and so i knew at the 30 percent mark when they had their first hookup that it wasn't going to be like an enjoyable book for me and i probably was going to be a miss and it just was i mean there was no tension in the relationship anymore um and it just was kind of boring and it was definitely 100 percent insta love there was absolutely no relationship growth in, on any level the things that he says like the writing is good but there's no relationship growth and the thing that's weird is like this book spans many months and still none of those months is spent with the characters growing their relationship besides lust i don't understand how their like what their relationship was built on and i wish that there had been more focus on their actual relationship than the other things it didn't necessarily feel like a slog to get through but when when they weren't having sex like nothing was happening and it just was not my favorite so i definitely am going to read the second book in the series eventually it's captor captive but this was just not it like the hero was great um he was like this mafia guy who was like the enforcer and he was like the second hand and he was definitely morality chain for sure 
but it just wasn't like everything that I wanted it to be. And the heroine, she was basically one of those women that are written to like everybody is in love with her sort of situation. And there wasn't anything really there for me to grasp onto. I didn't know what she wanted to do. There's brief mentions of her being a teacher, very brief mentions of her being an artist. Um, but they, they just were lacking a little bit and like the dirty talk was great and the like spicy scenes were great but other than that there wasn't really a whole lot there so now I think I am going to start Throttle. This is probably the one that I am most likely to either really love or really not love. Um, it's the Formula One and I think it's Enemies to Lovers. I'm not really sure but I'm gonna start that. Hopefully update you with the 50% mark. I was gonna do that with Ruthless Creatures but to be honest, there just wasn't anything to talk about because it was a nothing story, so. I finished Throttle and this was so fucking boring. I gave it two stars. I struggled after the 80% or 80 mark to get through it. So this is claims to be an enemies to lovers story about a girl who is the sibling to the hero's F1 rival. We open with the hero getting into a car accident caused by her brother and then we flash forward to her brother getting signed by the same team that the hero is on. She ends up going on their racing tour with them. For what reason? I have absolutely no idea. They claim it is because she's going to be providing support for him, but there's like no support given or no reason why there's support. And like, there's no one else on the team or any of the other teams has family with them, um, traveling with them. So like, it. it it doesn't make any sense. So what sparks off the enemies to lovers part is that her brother is a dumbass. I don't like her brother. He makes stupid ass mistakes and then he's an asshole. Uh, and then he makes a stupid ass mistake that could have killed the hero. He gets angry and tells him off at a party that she's attending and she tells him off for telling her brother off. And that kind of sparks the whole thing. But he immediately is apologetic. He apologizes to her several times. And like her whole basis for disliking him is that he's a party boy. But like you're not dating him. So what reason do you have to dislike him? Like that's his personal business. And then 100% of the relationship building that they do is done off page. It's done by her recapping and doing time skips. And then the only times we actually see them together are when they're having sex. Uh, so it's very boring. They don't interact at all until the first 20%. And then after that, they interact very sparsely throughout the book. And then once they actually hook up at the 60% mark, the rest of it is just them having sex. 0% relationship growth in any way. Uh, and it just was boring and like the writing, very cringy. There's literally a line where she's like, you sound like a bad B-list rom-com. And he's like, but I fuck like a A-list porno. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. I don't get it. I don't get it. So I, do, I, I don't get the hype for this. I don't like it. I probably won't continue with the series. Uh, if that's what it's like. So now I'm going to start the QB Tyler one. I can never forget me not. The premise is that he gets amnesia. They're divorced. They're separate. He gets amnesia. Goes back to a time when um, they were in love. Just to help him get his memories back. Are you kidding me? And I think when his memories come back, he remembers that he cheated on her. So we'll see how that goes. Like if there's really good groveling, then that's fine. I don't usually like cheating 
if it's on our main characters. Um, but I think if he grovels enough, we could get away with it. Some people have really loved this, some people have really hated it, and I think it's kind of just about morally where you sit with romances. So I haven't heard anybody actually complain about the writing or anything like that. So I'm hoping that all of you um, mostly TikTok girlies can redeem yourself here because so far I'm questioning you. I finished Forget Me Not yesterday and I gave this two stars. So this is basically about a woman who gets a call in the beginning of the book that her husband has been in a, in a car accident. She realizes that he doesn't remember anything that's happened in the last, I think it's like five years or something like that. And in that time, they had had several miscarriages. He cheated on her and they were 60 days out of a divorce. So her doctor, AKA their friend, says that it would be best if he stays with her because he knows her, she can watch over him, etc., etc. So he moves her back. They move him back into her apartment, aka the apartment they used to have together. I liked this book initially. Okay, let me start at the beginning. This book is only 280 pages. And initially I was really enjoying it. I thought it was great. I liked the slow burn. Um, I liked like the emotion of them falling in love again. And then I quickly realized that we weren't seeing any of that again. We weren't seeing this growth from the couple again. And it was just them hooking up again. And I thought he knew the entire time. I had listened to enough people talk about this book that I knew that like the hero wasn't the best. So I thought he knew the entire time and he was faking losing his memory to get a second chance with her. That is not the case. He remembers um, after their first sex scene and then he continues to lie about not remembering for the rest of the book until the conflict of the book. The thing that bothered me about this the most, aside from the fact that we saw no relationship growth, is that their relationship was built on all of the things that happened prior to the traumas that they had endured in their relationship. So if so, if they had gotten back together and he had never remembered what happened, they would have never had to work through all, through all of that stuff. And as soon as he remembered, it felt like he didn't, he was avoiding having to deal with the side of her that he originally cheated on. Their relationship got really hard because she had had two miscarriages, they were grieving and she really shut down and she didn't want to get help. And so she wasn't talking to him, she wasn't interacting with him and he was grieving as well. And so it was really hard for him not to have the love of his life, you know, there um, for him and he cheated on her. It felt like he is now getting away with all of the things that he did and that they went through in the pain that she endured. He's now getting her as the happy, bubbly woman that he knew before all of these things happened because she's now, you know, a year or something out, two years out of this really deep depression and grief. And she's back to, not back to, but she has that personality that he fell in love with all those years ago. And so it felt like he was okay never telling her and just having, not having to deal with any of that because, and the reason I say this is because every time she brings up the fact that she doesn't think that she's going to be able to work out a new relationship with him without his memories because she has all of the memories of everything that they went through, of all of the pain that they went through, of all the pain that he put her through. There's no resolution or closure for her on that because he doesn't remember. So there's no answers, there's no working through it, there's nothing. And every time she brings that up, he gets angry and he gets defensive and he's like, well, why can't we just ignore that? Like, why can't we just move past it? You don't love me? Disgusting. And I didn't like it. And then he gets his memories back and he lies about having his memories. It just feels even worse. Like it just feels even more like he wants to ignore the issues that they actually had in the relationship and he just tells her like, can't we just move on? Why can't we just move on? You don't love me enough to just move on? And I didn't like it. In addition to that, there's nothing about past him that makes me believe that he really loved her because all of his actions prove otherwise. He cheated on her, which I don't 
Like, obviously, I don't condone, but I can understand why he was hurt, but I don't understand why he would have cheated. Like, if he was genuinely in love with her and he genuinely wanted to see her get better, I get that people make mistakes, but it just, it's, and then I think the thing that is the nail in the coffin is that he then dates the woman that he cheats on her with. And like, I, I just, it doesn't make sense. I don't know. I just, I, I think that their relationship didn't go through any of the growth that would have been needed for me to believe that their marriage is now going to succeed and that they've worked through all of their issues. And the hero just felt very dismissive to me, very manipulative. And I don't think that there was a proper groveling process or not even necessarily groveling, but there was not enough proper care given on his part to prove that he legitimately cared about the hurt that he caused her. I'm sorry, I just, I don't like, I didn't like it. I didn't, even if we're looking at it, even if it wrapped up in a pretty enough bow for me, I cannot get past the point. I cannot get past the part where the entirety of the book is them having sex and no, nothing. So I swear when I went into this video, I was really expecting myself to like some of these books because like I'm a hype bitch. I love reading hyped books and enjoying hyped books. Like most of the time I end up enjoying hype books and this, it just is not working. Like these books, they just don't, they don't work for me. They have very specific things that are, are pet peeves of me, of mine, if you will. And we will move on to the last book and possibly those two books um, in that duet. So. I almost spoiled myself for who she ends up with. I think I have a pretty good idea of who she ends up with. Um, we'll see how I feel about it. Please but. ignore the sound of my tortoise eating his lettuce in the background, but I finished the last book for this video and I want to talk about it. I ended up finishing the first book in the What He Doesn't Know duet. And this is about a woman who the hero has just come back to his hometown and he is teaching at the private school that the heroine works at. The heroine is married and they were childhood friends and they each had like a crush on each other and then he ended up, he was five years older. They went their separate ways, they haven't seen each other since then. And now the heroine is going through a rough time in her marriage and they sort of hit it off. The heroine has lost she lost two of her children and her husband has essentially completely shut down um, and they don't really communicate anymore. Well, first off, okay, I gave this three stars. Um, there is a trigger warning for loss of children, mention of parental abuse. There is mentions of mass shootings. There is, in my opinion, animal abuse, at least, at the, at the very least, animal neglect and death of an animal. It starts up this relationship with the hero and in my opinion, it's very obvious who she ends up with. I'm gonna put a spoiler card right here. I'm going to fully go into this book. So if you have intended on reading this duet and you don't wanna be spoiled, um, you can go ahead and skip. Obviously I haven't read the second book in the series, so I don't know for certain, but it was very obvious to me that her husband was the person that she was in love with and that the hero was someone that she put all of her frustrations and things into. But every time she's around her husband, it is all about her husband. She's constantly thinking about her husband. She's thinking about how to make him happy, how to get him to pay attention to her. Like her thoughts are all around him. And so the only time she thinks about the hero and I'm saying hero because he's the other point of view. Um, anytime she thinks about him is when they're together and that's pretty much it. Like you can tell that when she's by herself, her thoughts are consumed by her husband. I mean, it's, it's obvious to me where this goes. I don't quite get how this is like a true love triangle. They say I love you and things at the end when they finally get together or when they get together. Um, but to me, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Like I didn't feel any chemistry between them. I didn't really believe in their relationship. It 100% felt to me as if the heroine was seeking out someone who would give her the love and attention that her husband wasn't giving her, regardless of who it was. And the hero very much idolized who she was, who she used to be. And he was obsessed with the idea that her husband wasn't good enough for her and that he would be better for her. Um, so I just didn't feel any like true 
love and emotion between the two of them. The animal abuse comes in her, her bird dies and there is a scene where she's having an argument with her husband and she takes her domesticated bird and releases that bird into the wild, which is a plethora of issues. In my opinion, you are unwittingly or indirectly now killing that animal. That animal is domesticated, it has no way to hunt for itself or to keep itself safe from prey. We will not even get too into the conversation around introducing a non-native creature or non-native animal into a new environment, the diseases and things that that can bring to it, the new prey that wasn't prey previously, like it just, it's a whole host of issues. But aside from that, the complete disregard for this animal's well-being, in my opinion, was the most disgusting thing about this book and it like made me angry. I don't know why it was included. There's even an, a whole monologue after she does it where she's like, "What? how is she living now? Like, is she free or is she scared? Like, you basically set that bird up to die. I, it's not, it's not like a far stretch to come to that conclusion if you use more than two of your brain cells. So I, it just made me really angry. And overall, just the book was just okay. Like, it wasn't anything great. It wasn't anything spectacular. It wasn't this angsty love triangle situation. To me, it was just very clear the whole time who she was really in love with. And it just was a disappointment to me. And that part just made me really angry. So those are my thoughts on that book. I don't know if I will continue to do it. Honestly, I'll probably just look up a spoilery review and just call it a day. Those are all of the books that I wanted to read for this video. Altogether, not very successful. I... I kind of already knew that like I have very specific reading tastes and I don't necessarily need to go with every hyped book but I like to read hyped books. I like to be involved in the community and reading what people are reading. So I think personally for me the most disappointing one was definitely Ruthless Creatures. This was a book that I had expected to really really love and it just wasn't it. I just didn't really like it all that much and that's personal preference of things that I don't like. So let me know down in the comments your thoughts on any of the books that I read. If you have read them and enjoyed them or you dislike them, let me know down in the comments. Other than that, if you don't have anything to say, leave a lettuce emoji and I will catch you guys in my next one. Thanks so much for watching.